Hi everyone. Welcome to Product Teardown February, uh, March edition with Curious Junior. So we have the founders of Curious Junior here. Thank you so much guys for taking out the time from your busy schedule and joining us today. Uh we uh, we'll wait for like a uh, like a minute or so while people uh join us and then we'll start the event. Awesome. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh before we take it forward, in case any of you are joining us for the first time, uh let me just give you a brief introduction about what TPF is and what we do at the product tier downs. So TPF is a volunteer driven community of product managers and enthusiasts who are passionate about making an impact and helping everyone grow. We run several programs like in Surjo we have tier downs we have a uh, PLG that was recently concluded and many other programs like that for basically everyone who wants to get into product management from students looking to explore the PM domain to mid level or senior level folks we run initiatives for everyone to help them grow and learn specifically talking about tier downs so the reason behind tier downs was that we as a as a community wanted to do something to help people get access and and be able to solve problems faced by actual companies real problems faced by companies get the exposure to how product managers actually work and in the process also build a portfolio or as we call it proof of work so that helps people not just in building their problem solving skills but through our initiative the people who win the uh, product tier downs also get to interview with the partner company and with that we have been able to place many people in top companies like doubtnut uh, misho uh, danzo and others which you can all find on our website and today we have a uh, curious junior folks with us who will be uh, choosing who gets to join their product team today so over to you guys uh, starting from amit if you would like to share what you guys do at curious junior how it all started and how has been your journey so Welcome to this uh, uh, event, everyone. Uh, so basically, we are the co-founders here, Ali, Mizul, and I. So I'll tell you a little bit story about us. Uh, so back in 2020, everybody was talking about coding for kids, and at the same time, Indian government also launched the national education policy, uh, which made the coding a mainstream subject for a K-12 segment also. So that's how, like, we started based on two data points, which is. like uh, 88% of the users do not have access to laptop and at the same time uh, 79% of the users want to learn anything in their own native language so that's why uh, we came up with the platform which is mobile first furniture coding platform and that is actually the quick curious junior to learn coding on mobile for the kids so i will let middle to add and ali also here yeah thank you thank you amit i think amit have already uh, defined why curious junior exist and why we have come with this idea so uh, coding was always imagined on the bigger screens as it was in the western countries and for a country like us uh, we needed a solution which is most accessible to the masses and, and and when we saw the data point of students not having the mobile phones and and 88% of students do not have mobile phone in k12 which is a bigger uh i would say the impact uh, opportunity we had seen and that's why we have identified there is a solution uh, required where user where students can learn coding on mobile and and at the same time to make it more effective right so we we uh, made sure that they are able to learn coding in their mother tongue and then able to understand and imagine the problem statements near them so that's why uh, we came up with the solution of learning coding in in their native language and uh, i think ali can add to it uh then we will talk about the problem statements moving ahead once uh, the introduction is done 
thanks madhul thanks tanya uh, really enjoying this session so uh, curious junior we believe ki coding is going to be the next maths and science equivalents because uh, the era of technology is here we are on the on the cusp of uh, uh, technology revolution coming to household and every person will be involved in some technology uh, consumption uh, so we believe uh, this is the right time where anybody uh, who lives in this uh, time right now has to be aware of how technology is built and also in the process become a creator and uh, we are starting with coding uh, with two perspective one coding as a skill and coding as a medium so when i mean by skill uh, i mean uh, you understand how you create programs and use that uh, programs to create things that uh, that explains from your daily life uh, you solve problems from your academics you visualize better so that will be a sort of skill in uh, skill based uh, coding uh, relevance for the kid second is a medium where coding is being used to visualize subject matter from uh, other part of the curriculum so that we understand will get a, de a deeper meaning of the concept for example when we model photosynthesis when we model let's say human immune system through programming we do get to understand more about uh, how uh, actual process take place and it will build up the knowledge graph so coding is is going to help kid at every level so that is what we believe and we also believe coding cannot or any skill cannot be taught in isolation there has to be a validation and also support there uh, we imagine community coming into the picture and we believe the coders community is going to become <laughs> very large and that's the ambition of curious junior to democratize uh, coding education to every level and for that it's not an easy task to do actually because we are imagining everything from the very uh, scratch uh, we are innovating in the technology we have got the technology which we have only created right now which is a tech powered learning on mobile it is uh, not just creating programs through mobile but also a learning system on top of it so that's the innovation part we have brought and curious junior is going to help out every kid who aspire to do great in the future awesome yeah tanya you can take awesome forward. awesome that sounds amazing uh before we jump into the discussion about problem statement uh, i would like to introduce all these humble folks who who have who have not shared what they have done till now so speaking about amit so amit is the co-founder of curious junior and mind docs after the academy in the past and also some companies that he has founded uh he has previously worked in engineering at bobble and uh, before moving to a product role in doubtnut Uh, he is a 2014 BTech passer from IIT BHU. He is an open source contributor and helps people with knowledge on tech. Talking about Mridul, so Mridul is a, is a, the co-founder of Curious Junior. He has previously uh, he was the Thailand launch head for Oyo, where he worked on supply chain and hiring before becoming an AVP at Circle Internet. He is a 2015 BTech plus MTech passer from IIT BHU. Uh, we have Janeshar. Janeshar is also the co-founder of Curious Junior, and he co-founded After the Academy and Mindox with Amit. Uh, he was previously a senior software engineer at Exigo. dot com, and he's a 2015 BTech plus MTech passer from IIT BHU. We also have Sumit with us, who has not yet turned on his camera, but we'll soon be able to see him. He is the Android developer at Curious Junior. He was previously an intern at Persistent Systems and an Android developer intern at OnMyWay. dot com. He's a 2020 computer science grad. So thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. Uh, let's move on and discuss about the problem statement that we that you had given to the participants. Over to you guys. Sure, <laughs> sure. So, so <clears throat> sorry. So, just to give you the overview of uh, two problem statement. Uh, one is basically with respect to how do we unfold or, or uh, how do we basically uh, tell the students about their journey and how do we guide guide them moving forward. in the uh, learning ecosystem so we have identified that like 80% of the students do not know anything about coding who enroll into curious junior but they are the ones those who want to learn coding but they uh, they they don't know anything yet second uh, type of the students are those 15% of them those who know about coding what can be done with coding but don't know much about it so haven't tried this out 
and the five percent of other ones those who are, have done basic basics of coding and want to learn advanced coding and create something with the benefit of learning coding so these are the three kind of user segment which we have identified and now the problem statement is to basically tell them uh, uh, like uh, like as in step by step or, or basically i would say unfold uh, the task or, or the elements in the product for them so they can learn better because we do not want to overwhelm them on the first day of the journey and then get get exposed to everything which where they are confused and then don't know what where to start from and what to learn next so that that is the problem statement where we need to basically structure the journey of a user where they will they will get to know about each and every element uh, step by step and so will they will get to know about each, uh, everything with respect to learning competing getting daily knowledge through bytes and and more competition exposure but it need to happen step by step so this is the problem statement where we are looking at a journey of a user in the product second like ali mentioned very clearly we imagine this as a community and then we always see that community led learning as basically is more engaging and then excite users to learn more and more and our, our ambition is to make sure that while these your students are learning they they enjoy this learning and at the same time they also see the impact of their learning and as in if you see uh, in in curious junior these users learn in the form in the three step learning process which is like uh, learn in the bite size content then code on the code arena then publish their creations on the curious junior app store where they are able, able to see the impact of the learnings so we on, also want to create a community uh, aspect of it where they can basically learn with each other or engage with each other or even see their standings uh, in in a group to to keep them motivated enough or 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 also create their individual profiles or portfolios while while they create more and more uh, apps or games or or any any visualization of or learning of other concepts then they they should be able to uh, uh, impact of that learning in their learning journey and also on their personal portfolio they have created so these are the two aspects of community where we feel that there is a requirement of bringing a social aspect of uh, learning uh, into users life so these are the two problem statement today we are going to discuss and and we have seen very very good um, uh, submissions uh, in the in the form of deck coming in and would love to discuss uh, like some of them here and definitely will uh, try to uh, include our opinions on it awesome awesome that sounds great so uh, let's uh, right, get right into it uh, we have pranshu here who will be sharing his screen and we'll have a picker wheel thing where randomly we'll pick which participant gets to uh, present their decks first so over to you pranshu uh, thanks tanya and to all of you uh, let me welcome you here so let me share my screen the picker wheel we have one second <clears throat> i hope you can see it now can you see it yes yeah, we can see it yeah okay so uh, there are couple teams that needed a little more time so we're just starting with these three and uh, uh, i'll just spin it and wh whoever names comes up that is the person who goes first okay awesome so we have abhinav will be presenting first abhinav if you could just raise your hand i'll add you to the um, stage Yeah. Yeah. Audible. Yeah, Abhinav, you are audible. Can you also switch on your video? Yeah, let me listen. Awesome. Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. I hope it's visible to everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yeah, Abhinav, Ab Ab you can start. Oh, you'll have eight minutes exactly. I'll give you a reminder at eight minutes, uh, okay. or if you want a reminder at seven minutes, so that you can wrap it up in eight. Right? Sounds good. Yes. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Abhinav Kimani, and I am a second year undergrad at IIT Dhanbad. I'll be a presenter for today, and will present my solution for this month's product tear down. So, this month. So this month's product teardown was in association with Curious Junior, which is the online coding platform for kids, where kids are taught coding with the help of effective curriculum and practice modules. Curious Junior is a top mobile coder 
learning app for kids. It is based on fun coding games to teach kids the basic of programming and a very essential, which is a very essential skill in today's world. So the problem statement, so the problem statement that I chose, that I chose needed me to first identify the segment of the user. Now, based on the user segment, I had to decide how and when a particular feature will be revealed, revealed to a user in its journey on the app. It was a great challenge and my process to solve it was first the research part, then came recognizing the problem by sol by making it in user personas and the plan which in which I formed the solution of the problem. So coming to the market research, <clears throat> so coming to the market research, the online coding for kids market is expected to be valued at $8.2 billion by 2031. So we can see that the market has a lot of potential and Curious Geno needs to capture more of the market. After doing the market research, After doing the market research, now was the time to identify the problems of the user by personifying them. Most of the pain points that are listed are based on user reviews and my experience of the app when I first installed and started using it. So the, so the first of the user persona is Aryan, who is whose age is eight and is located in Mumbai. His main goal is to learn the basics of coding and he wants to learn new languages like JavaScript and Python, but he's unable to do so because of the confusing UX of the app and there is no FAQ section. Second one in second one in the line is Rehan. His age is 11 and he's located in Jaipur. His goal is to make fun games on the platform, compete with friends, and win challenges and goodies. His main his pain points include that the games are not segregated into skill levels, and user flow is confusing, and he gets confused. So so we see. Uh, so the main pain point which we saw is the poor user flow or the UX of the app which includes navigation and onboarding. In the in the navigation part, there are no personal dashboards, there are no FAQ section. And in the onboarding part, user, user is not segmented on scale basis and there is no app walkthrough for the new user which is getting onboarded on the app. And with every problem comes many opportunities. So these are the opportunities uh, based on which I my base my solution, which we will see in the later side slides. Uh, so basically, to solve the problem statement, I came up with three solutions. Uh, first one was the easiest to think of and was segregation of users into segments and giving each segment a different dashboard or landing page, showing the feature that they will use the most first. Like here are the three main segments of the user, like segment A, new users that don't know anything about coding and are here to learn coding for the first time ever, which is the major use ba user base of the app. Say segment B, users with some basic knowledge of coding and they have come on the Curious Juno app to learn a new language. And segment C, users have, who have done coding on some other platform and, here, and are here just to compete and with challenges. So like segmenting the users will solve the problem to some extent. And the main, main benefits are listed here on the slide, as you can see. This will help company focus on the three segments individually and grow the user base in each one of them. So basically, for segmenting, users will have to take on a simple quiz that will determine that which dashboard will be shown to which user, thus improving the overall app experience and better user flows. So I designed the UI of the app on and the visual of the updated app that I imagined. Like first, the first the user, first the user will have to answer a few yes and no questions, and on the basis of that, the user will be segmented in segment A, B, or C. And a personal personalized dashboard will be shown to the user as depicted in this slide. Here is the segment dashboard for segment A, segment B, and segment C. For the second solution, I introduce you to Curious Senior, the official mascot of the app, helping the user along the way. A mascot helps bring brand recognition and will help help grow Curious Junior as a brand and can be used in many, many ways to improve the brand identity. The Curious Junior will have three features. He will greet the new user with a welcome message or also with a video. He will give user an entire tour of the app and walk through all the features and options so the user doesn't feel overwhelmed. And he can be recalled anytime at the click of a button to solve user, is is user issues and FAQs. It will basically help app become more communicating for the user base, which is majorly children and young adults by personifying the app. Like here is the UI design of the proposed solution. Curious Junior will give an app walkthrough showing all the features and he can be called anytime at the click of the button which I designed as you can see in the slide. 
so the last of the solution which according to me will solve all the problem in the given in the statement is by adding a onboarding checklist which helps user get familiar with the app and get rewards for doing so like earning xp badges vouchers and maybe curious junior goodies <clears throat> but the problem is that we cannot roll out all these features all together and the prioritization is required for which i use the right framework as you um, which is the, you, can, you can clearly see the order of the rollout as per the rice score and the uh, and the second solution which is the curious winner clearly wins and now that i have listed all the solutions now is the time to gauge the success of the solution i propose by success metrics here are the few kpis which i propose to use first is the time on task second is the customer satisfaction score where we will constantly ask the user about the reviews and his ratings and how we can more improve the app better third one is adoption and engagement and last one is the like the goal completion rate increase like if the goal completion rate of the user increases we will know that the app has app ux is better now so thank you this is all from my side now i will take your questions awesome thank you for the great presentation abhishek finished it right in time that's also a great aspect uh now the stage is open to uh, the panelist who will be asking you questions regarding this yes uh, so thank you thank you so much i really liked your presentation and your uh, approach to solution uh, i have two questions uh, that i want to understand first is what was the relevant of location and the age that you have chosen to segment the personas uh, second question is suppose uh curious junior is right now only targeting class 9 to 12 let's say mm. uh, uh age bracket only so mm. do you have any proposed solution uh for the improvement of the current app for that like the current app has a lot of user flow flaws which i just shown and which can be improved by giving a like a onboarding or onboarding walk through through the mascot of the app like curious senior and i guess that will improve the uh, ux and the flow of the app and will help users like get use better get to use the app better okay and the, what about the first part uh, what was the relevance of location in your age was it random or what is something meaningful for that no the location was random that was totally random but the age is like the majority like majority of the user which are kids and uh the mm. kids and young adults that i focus and that was the main user base so that what i base the user personas on okay and all Just the like, problems that yes. and all the problems that i saw were like when i first started yes. using the app i saw these solutions mm. all these problems and then i mm. like hey, oh, okay experience it on it okay just the last question from my side mm -hmm. uh that uh, the second question which i asked i want to understand more on that uh basically if you are targeting let's say class uh, an particular age group class uh, 9 to 10 uh, 12th let's say so which part of the slide is relevant can you show me that slide like what do you mean can you please repeat the question like uh if suppose uh, curious junior only targeting right now solution for class 9 to 12 mm -hmm. so uh, proposed solution that you have provided that you said about mascot or uh similar thing can you show me on the slide so that i can understand better like the mascot of the app doesn't depend on the age of the user it will help everybody like as a, it's okay. not like that ki like a class 9 student will not be benefited from a mm. mascot we all are some familiar okay. mascot like mcdonald's have it and they help okay. improve the brand identity like we can make goodies on it it will help marketing and many things mm. like it's not limited yeah. on the age of the user obviously okay and onboarding have will be relevant now if you're targeting just a one segment what what do you mean onboarding will be relevant to the app if you're targeting just one segment right now like we can always segment the users like if we are even focusing on a particular segment like suppose segment a for example mm. so in, like helping segment c user doesn't like hurt anybody but we will focus on the like we will like we will 
focus on segment A, but also it improves the users of segment C. Okay. Okay. All that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Avina, uh, I just want to understand uh, the uses of mascot. Uses of mascot from your uh, solution. I understand that you want to basically solve for FAQs, right? And end up walk through. So, hmm. F walk through can be done without the mascot as well, because for the mascot, it is possible that it might bring in more complexity for the user's life. Second is I do want to understand if there are FAQs. So, what kind of FAQs are you expecting, which are more relevant to have a mascot rather actually creating a solution for it in the app? Like the main focus like the main reason i chose like adding a mascot was like because the majority of the users are like uh, children and young adults personifying the app will sure, surely help like they will relate to the app more and it will be like a communication between the app and the user like they will feel connected to the app that was the main reason i personified uh, like uh, and introduced a mascot rather than just a simple user flow like a simple user walkthrough okay what kind of questions are you expecting from the users in that case? Like, if mainly FAQs like, uh, like user have a problem in a particular challenge, there is an error, and uh, like user is unable to find something or some or something or some option, like something like that. That the mascot will reappear and help user, like help user show it, like user ko dikha dega ki where it is on the app. Particularly helping the like the user. Okay, okay. Acha. Agar malab, I think if I would have been there, like I would have caught more deeper use case of mascot. Uh, in that case, uh, instead of just being uh, having a walk through, uh, like you mentioned, and it, it need to have some depth in it, right? So that's why so I I was trying to Basically ask. Basically, like that. like addition of a mascot will also help in marketing of the app, like. Will help like the main it could help in marketing of the app like it could make like we could make goodies or something like that and it will help the brand identity then it might not be a problem statement for product here hmm. but still like yeah, other, yeah, yeah, other, yeah. obviously it's a good 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 thing to have like but if yeah. you were asked if you were asking about the deeper like i can i can giving you i'm giving you the more features like it could help in other fields also and this Cool, yeah. I think that's that's a, that's it from my end. And great work, uh, Avina. Uh, just wanted to go deeper into your thought process. Yeah, Avina, I have also one question. Like uh, you have mentioned that uh, we can have some onboarding questions uh, for the mm -hmm. first time, like for the new users, right? So if you are solving uh, the segments of the user by the uh, by the onboarding process, then what's the need of mascot here? Like if we already know which type of user this is then we can uh, like we can personalize the whole app for uh, that particular user right mm. so are we just uh, uh, using the curious senior for the faqs or uh, just try uh, the curious senior will be there for every segment or uh, we are just uh, using curious senior for the faqs one in the curious senior will be there for the every every segment like after onboarding also like user has to get to get to be familiar with the app get to know like the option hai. like for that we, i introduced the mascot like it will help the user like the like the challenge you can scroll the challenges from here you can learn coding from here like the block coding the section so that was the reason i introduced the mascot all along with the on and, and and from the onboarding what we are trying to achieve uh, like from the onboarding question from the onboarding question we are just uh, trying to achieve trying to get to know how much user knows about coding like what is the experience level kya usko koi language aati hai ya is just new or the new be bilkul hi new hai so for that he will be placed in segment a and if he know something and wants to just a new just a, just want to learn a new language uske liye segment b and if you are if he is just there for the challenges he, he will be placed in segment c you can see the questions like do you have any prior experience in coding do you know the basics of coding like variable operators and functions which was in the block coding course of the curious junior app okay okay yeah thanks so one question abhinav uh, mm -hmm. 
a user who is actually able to write code uh, which is javascript like the text coding uh, really need the master or not because uh, he is able to like perform that type of task on the mobile devices so do they, they really need master or not i understand that the user who is coming for the first time using the mobile for the first time will need the master might need the master but the user who is actually able to do the text coding will will they need it or not like i don't can you please repeat so i am asking you there are two types of user uh, one is very smart who are able to do everything like playing the game of the using facebook using instagram do they really need the mascot for the feature or the walk through like mascot so was mascot was only there to personify the app it was there to like the user feels connected it has like it will help the it will help it Yeah, I helped the company grow as a brand. It was there, like the user feels connected and like feel that the uh, that I that it's a, like a you human human like figure. That's what that's yeah, the reason yeah, mascot for me. It. it was just there to make the app feel more connected. Yeah, yeah, got it. Thank you. Awesome. I guess we are done with all the questions. So thank you, Abhina, for the present amazing presentation and best of luck. Um, yeah, over to you, Pranshu. Uh, sure. So uh, yeah, Abhina, that great job, and we'll now move on to the next person. So again, we have two teams that we'll just be uh, rolling the dice with because the other two want want a little more time. So let's see who's next. Okay. Awesome. So, Pratula and Rishit, if you guys could just raise your hands, I'll add you to the stage. <laughs> yep, they're here. Yes. Oh, uh, I hope Hi, I'm visible and audible. Hi, Rishit. Yes, yes, you are both visible and audible. Uh, okay. I'll just share my screen. You uh, you will be given an alert at seven minutes to wrap it up. Sure, that works. Uh, can you guys please confirm if you're able to see my screen? Yeah, we're able to see your screen. Awesome. Uh, Tanya, let me know when I can start. Yeah, you can start now. Okay, awesome. Uh, so hi guys. I'll. to introduce myself i'm prachala i graduated in 2020 and i am currently working as a data analyst at postgres i think starting off quickly with the presentation i would like to start by putting myself into the shoes of the user to experience what the app feels like so uh, right now i am someone who's 15 years old i have some some experience with coding through school classes but at the same time i do not understand why how sorting a list in an ascending order is going to add any practical experience to my life in the longer run and for that reason i want to give curious junior a try to see how it will uh, how it will solve this question that i have in my mind and with that intent i would like to get started this is the very first screen that i see when uh, i'm using curious junior although uh, it's not going to benefit me i personally know of a lot of users who can benefit from this so i think it's a really great feature moving on i see something which is uh, which i'm not uh, wasn't really ready for majorly because i haven't even explored the app enough to find out whether or not the content was relevant for me so that's why i think you know it's not necessary but at the same time my psyche is still high so i would like to take that effort i am I'll, and be patient enough to tap through and finally land on the dashboard now now there's lot going on this dashboard here right so even before i can spot what the cta cta is my social media scrolling uh, pattern takes charge and i am, i find myself already scrolling through the dashboard to uh, see the various screens that are there and i realize that there are three courses that i can take but the ui is confusing in a way in which i don't know which course to start off with first because it looks like a progress map but i can attempt any course and it kind of leaves me confused while uh, exploring the app even more i find these two very interesting pages especially the one on the right which is called the app store right i think it's also something that directly answers my question of why i should be coding 
because there are these cool apps that I can build with coding, and that that gives me like a use case right there why I should learn coding and solves my problem. I just wish I had seen the screen a little bit earlier in my user journey. Now, after I am done exploring the app, I am at a point where I am trying to think of the right decision to make, and the uh, right decision to make, and the app isn't really helping me with where to start. And that decision fatigue wants makes me want to end the session right there and like you know just like scroll through some other app. I'll quickly take my uh, user hat off and PM hat on. This is the approach that we're going to follow while uh, while solving the problem statement. Right now, we just walk through the shoes of one particular user persona. But similarly, there are different users with different motivations, different levels of experience that exist. And it's so important to onboard all of them so that they get value from the, value from the app. And that's exactly what we are trying to solve through, the, through this presentation. Now, I'd quickly like to introduce you guys to our user personas. Meet Shilpa, Nakul, and Anu. Shilpa and Anu, the two girls on the corners, are, are other two people who do not have any experience with coding because of their uh, own respective reasons. Shilpa, because she's comparatively younger. Anu, on the other hand, because of the language barrier. Nakul is someone who does have experience with coding and is, and is a 12-year-old who wants to get, get value from the app. Moving on, uh, so we had about seven users, seven, uh, seven people we knew who we interviewed and we got uh, feedback from them with respect to the app, why they want to use the app, how would they use the app, and what are their motivations, and we segmented them into these different types. I'd also like to touch upon one point here. Three out of these seven users were using their parents' phones. So we just thought that it's important to acknowledge the presence of the parent stakeholder here, which is why one of the use cases is I want my kid to learn coding, right? Moving on, we have also, uh, when these users were in, uh, engaging with this app, they had different pain points. Uh, quickly, to quickly cover the pain points, Anu and uh, Shilpa have very similar pain points, which have to do a lot with the interface of the app and you know how it's very difficult to sort of decide which, to, which, uh, which feature to engage with. While uh, Nakul, on the other hand, has a very interesting pain point where he has a lot of ideas after interacting with the app store. But he feels that his own unique ideas cannot be implemented on Curious Junior. And he feels a bit de demotivated because of that. Based on the pain points that we have, we have uh, designed a couple of solutions, color coded them according to, according to the pain points on the previous slide. We've also mentioned which user segments these uh, solutions are targeting and will impact the most. Rishit, would you like to take on from here? Sure, thanks, Prachila. Uh, can we get into the next slide? Sure. OK, so I want to talk about our main solutions. First is the onboarding process. The second is the uh, segmented user journey. With the onboarding process, we have a flowchart on how we plan to onboard them. The initial thing also for reference of few wireframes here is a login option. Like Prachala mentioned, we would like to have a skip button here. Also, again, the parent and student uh, login feature here. We are not delving too much into the parent details, but we want to acknowledge their stakeholder. Uh, getting into the help us know you better questions. This is a set of questions we thought about to get as much information from the users with as many few questions as possible. And also the use cases are very uh, real and things that they can relate to. Uh, this is a little more on what we plan to ask from this onboarding process, asking uh, the first two we spoke about, then what do you expect out of the app, and also what is your experience with coding, as well as ending it with the setting setting a target. The green uh, help us know you better questions are the ones that help us uh, customize the content as well as the dashboard. Uh, the purple ones are the ones that help us improve retention through things like session welcome messages or notifications on WhatsApp and other things. Uh, getting into the final part, we also plan to have a little bit of a quiz. Uh, this is only to assess where exactly uh, the user has to start off in the app and so that they are at the right place. Uh, this then takes us finally into the dashboard. Uh, now talking about the segmented user journey. Ah, sorry, this thing. This is with respect to the clearer CTU, uh, CTA in the dashboard. Uh, like Rajla mentioned, there, there is a lot happening. So user is generally confused as to what uh, to do. So mimicking user behavior patterns from other apps could be helpful here so the user understands what to interact with. Uh, getting into the exact solution on how we'd uh, uh, 
introduced the various features. We've numbered the features here as well as mentioned the order of importance. This is the order in which we will reveal these features. Uh, we've bucketed the users based on their answer choices to understand uh, what are the different categories and what are the high volume categories. Uh, post which I just would like to uh, walk you through an example with bucket one and two. Bucket one and two are users which have no experience with coding. Uh, we have three columns here. The first one is going to be shown to you. Uh, these are all features. The first set of features are going to be shown uh, through a guided FTUE. The second set of features are freely accessible. And the third set of users are uh, third set of features are locked. So this can only be unlocked after they reach a certain XP level. Uh, so study an app store is something that would motivate a person who doesn't know much about coding that could then take them to projects and then finally competitions once they reach a certain XP level. Similarly with bucket three and four for the more experienced coders. This is some sample wireframes here on how uh, we would plan to show them if they click on a lock feature. Going to the prioritization, we uh, classified them into three types. Uh, our priority solutions, the first three, smooth onboarding, content customization. Uh, and segmentation. One minute. Uh, you have Rishit, you have one minute. Just look OK. Here. Thank you, Pranshu. Uh, the others are the dependent solutions, uh, a few like the parental customization, customize uh, uh, the session welcome messages, and also the mascot customizations. These are dependent on the implementation of the first three. And the others are individual solutions uh, and that are non-dependent on this. Uh, talking a little more on how we would like to measure success, uh, we have two main umbrella uh, metrics, engagement and retention. Engagement has a set of metrics we've identified. The ones in bold are the most important. Uh, also to talk about our North Star metric, uh, number of apps published per user, as you all mentioned in the introduction as well, we want to track if, we, if the user is getting value from the app. So this will exactly show if the user is understanding the content and also interacting with the app. Yeah, I think that comes to the end of the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Great presentation, guys. Absolutely love the visuals. Over to the panelists for the questions. Yeah. yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing work, guys. Firstly, right. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed the presentation and the way uh, you have identified and uh, basically being in the shoes of a user in the first place and then identified the solutions out of it. Uh, just very just one question. I wanted to understand uh, different use case of parents and student, which you have mentioned, mentioned, and why is it there? Because right now, as we are imagining that, uh, firstly, we want to make sure that users or uh, students are able to engage with the app, then then eventually uh, showing their progress to the parents. So wanted yeah a deeper understanding of this one. That's it. Shall sure, I sure. take this question? Do you want to? You can go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. So uh, this is, uh, like Prachala mentioned, three out of the seven users we spoke to after they used the app uh, were using it on their parents' phones. Uh, and also with respect to tier two, three, four cities, a lot of families have a common phone that people are using. So what we want to do, this is additional to the problem statement. Uh, like I mentioned, the priority solutions are the first three. We had a lot of things happening in our mind. We have a lot of content we'd also like to share with you post this. But the parental customization is something that uh, would motivate, uh, like if a parent can track what the kid is doing, they can constantly motivate the kid to keep coming back on the app and also progressing. Uh, and also, like Prachala mentioned, a common use case throughout was that, that parents also want their kids to learn coding. So this can help them have a visibility on what's happening and motivate them. Um, so basically bringing out another use case where uh, parents are asking their kids to learn coding. Yeah. That, that could be one way. The other is also kids are just doing it proactively and also parents have visibility on what they're doing to continuously motivate the kids. Got it. Got it. Rachula, you want to add something? No, I think you covered most of the points. Uh, we did not go in too deep because, you know, it was kind of not related. But at the same time, uh, when when there are two stakeholders for a product, right, there's a kid and there's a parent, you have to be uh, very conscious of the fact that which screen is going to be used by which stakeholder. So let's hmm. say eventually if we were supposed to add a paywall, that will be designed with respect to how the parent stakeholder will view it. So, right, I think those, a lot of elements come in once we are sort of adding all these elements, all these features, but like it's completely different. And I think we can dive a lot deeper into it. It will be like a completely new uh, feature. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Right? I think what you have shown is just a glimpse of it. 
because right. it because it has very very uh, bigger value behind what we are like about to start discussing had like 10 minutes and like we had to show everything yeah. so no 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 and no, no. i we really enjoyed it no worry thank you so much yes uh, so i really like the presentation i really like the way uh, you have taken the problem uh, going from the shoes of the kid and understanding what their pain points are and also to get the expectation uh from the product being met so i really enjoyed it and how you presented it i really liked it uh so i have i have one question uh actually two questions so first question is uh in the uh, discovery of the features uh you have taken for one segment uh, study should be the first so what was the logic behind that uh we sort of so someone who does not have any experience with coding and someone whose actual motivation is to catch up with the uh, catch up with other people or catch up with what's going on in school right courses are available because he knows that these are the few things that i want to cover he has a very clear idea of what he wants from the app on the other hand if there's someone who wants to know more no more no more about coding but doesn't really have an idea app store is a great way of showing it because this is something that again we found out through user reviews because once you're showing the user apps it's a very direct way of showing the use cases of what will happen if you code right so it's giving you the motivation right there that if you code you'll be able to make right. all these cool apps so that was the thought process behind uh, it was like a bit so, of a own experience so and a bit of thing. what we gathered from user reviews so uh, for the major part i understand ki first uh, there should should be a display of what they are going to build or build an aspiration out of like the creativity and then provide a mechanism to get that output correct right right so yeah. also okay, if, I, and, yes, if i yes. may add uh, yes yeah. being shown the competitions for such users at a very early stage could be overwhelming for them as well as right. directly go into the projects so this is a little bit of hand holding for users who don't know much about tech or coding right at okay. the same time i think what what also happens is and a lot of feedback we got was about there were lots of features to engage with and if you do not restrict them the user gets confused so i think it's very important to kind of lock some features for the own like for the users good so that they are not able to access the features until they have earned that skill where you know they they are, they have been to that level where they are able to uh navigate okay. across and understand the use case okay and uh, what if i add one more piece to the problem if we have to uh, also attach a kid to a longer learning journey uh, does your solution remain the same or there will be some deviation from your original solution uh, by what do you mean suppose by longer learning longer so basically what i mean if a kid is coming to our application and we want to uh, provide them a, a learning journey of let's say 6 months in our application would your uh, feature discovery would be same or it would be different i think uh, again it would sort of uh, de depend on what it is that like why we want to introduce this and what is why is the what are the kids motivations while doing it so like we had a set of onboarding questions right i think just okay. to make sure that it's a perfect fit for the user we would want to add a bit more onboarding questions to understand them completely and once we have them on the basis of that we can have like a very customized 6 month flow based like i think it's the key is to understand what the user wants so you know okay. probably through data probably through what the user is expecting and like user feedback i think these through are the levers that you can pull to get as much feedback as possible and then implement okay okay fine uh so anybody else want to ask question please go ahead everything i think we yeah we are done okay thank you so much thank, great, you. thank you so much prachla thank you rishi that was an amazing presentation thank you uh yeah awesome over to you pranjur yeah thanks prachla and rishi so this time we'll have all the three uh people in the in the wheel so and let's see who comes up for the next turn so we have swastika nikhil uh, like these three teams let me just spin the wheel quickly awesome nikhil it's your turn please raise your hand 
Good luck. Yeah, Nikhil is here. Hi, can everyone see me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will uh, just share my screen. Nikhil has some nice natural background voice as well. <laughs> just to add an effect. Yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's just this. All right. Uh, let me know when I can begin, Tanya. Yeah, you can begin. All right. Uh, so my name is Ankhil, and I will be addressing the um, second problem statement, which was to add some uh, social value, value and make sure the users are returning to the app because of the social value. Coming to the user personas, my first user is um, a girl called Kavya. She's in grade nine in a tier two city. Uh, she is in a large school and. Curious Junior has already uh, onboarded many students from that school and they are all active users. However, when Kavya was introduced to the app and she uh, introduced it to her friends, her immediate circle of friends were not interested in learning coding, which means she developed a couple of pain points through the journey. And one of them was basically that she could not connect with anybody that she was familiar with. She was not able to build that community that Curious Junior promised her. The community that was available to her was uh, strangers and random people that she would see from the fame wall and the champions display, but nobody that she could engage with or relate to on, in real life. And the second problem that uh, she was facing was that when she shares an app, many of her apps would get two views, four views, three likes, etc. But when she goes to the app store and sees the trending apps, there would be apps getting thousands of views, 2000 views. And although all the users can create the same apps in Curious Junior platform, she felt that she was doing something wrong and that was demoralizing for her. And hence the initial infatuation for learning coding that was there kind of faded away because of the lack of partnership, a study buddy and the de demoralizing attribute that came with it. Our second user uh, is Amar, class 7 from a tier 4 city. He is from a small school and he is the first user from that school who has come across a Curious Junior and he learned it from his cousin. When he introduced his, this app to his friends, they were all excited in class 7 and they all were onboarded immediately. However, uh, Amar's parents believe that he does not need a smartphone to um, a function in daily life so he uses his mom's phone once he comes back from school which means all the sharing features on apps whether sharing sorry on the curious junior platform whether it's sharing apps badges certificates have to be shared on uh, sms uh, whatsapp anything have to be shared with contacts on his mom's phone so he's not that provides a hurdle between him and his friends that he can engage with secondly and most importantly that uh, I found when I was using the app was he cannot, he's following all his friends that he introduced the app to, but he cannot see them. So when he's learning with somebody and he wants to track their progress, see how many badges they got, see what he, they have been learning along with him, just as, as a form of healthy competition, he cannot actually, go, when he goes to his profile, there's, he's following seven people. But when he clicks on the number, he cannot see who he's following. So the conversation has to continue with them, between them, only in next day in school or on WhatsApp on call and isn't uh, in the platform itself. Sorry. So the goals of this uh, presentation will be to uh, enable users, especially users like Kavya, to find a community immediately, boosting confidence of the users to share their creations and create an identity and improving retention. Now, uh, other than the following to be the ability to see the people you are following, uh, I have provided one solution that is divided into four phases. Each phase come along with certain impact and metrics. And if the metrics prove that the phase has been su successful, we can move on to the next phase and the next phase and, vice, uh, and so on and so forth. So phase one is introducing a fifth menu option along with challenge, app store, study and profile. We will be introducing groups. Now, although it's in plural for now, phase one is 
that every user who is onboarded on Curious Junior will be added to a group that is their school group. And their, uh, the group, when you click on the group option, it goes to the landing page and it's very simple. It's, it's the only landing page that's available in which you can see all the members of that school group. So any member, uh, any user of uh, Curious Junior who is a part of Kendra Vidyalaya, for example, will be a part of that group. So when Kavya is onboarded, my first uh, user persona, and she, and although Curious Junior has many active users from her school, her immediate friends she cannot commit, uh, com um, communicate with, she will obviously be added to this group and be able to engage with other users and get to know who else from her school, from her batch is using this app. There is also the search feature and the filter search feature where you can search for members regarding that based on their name and filter search. You can filter members based on class level and current language. Current language filter search is very important because you want to connect with somebody, not just anybody in your school, but somebody who's learning Blockly along with you or JavaScript along with you. And that's when the study buddy concept becomes um, relevant. And of course, when you click on any member on the group, it takes, takes you to the profile. Now, Amar's user journey on the app. Uh, he's, as I said, he's the first person in his school to come across Curious Junior. So when he's creating a profile, unlike what the current state of Curious Junior, city, school, and grade are compulsory uh, fields that every user has to fill in. This is obviously for the implementation of this feature. And once you're filling in a school, it, you are mapped to the existing database. But for Amar, he's, since he's the first member in his school to come across Curious Junior, the school group does not exist, and he will be essentially creating a new group. Once he searches, uses the search uh, option to search for his friends, he realizes they are not there. And he always has the option to invite them onto the group and onto the app itself. Now the impact is should be immediate and uh, prominent. They, uh, Kavya and uh, Amar get to be a part of a community that they are familiar with. And uh, school groups will never become irrelevant because um, with every graduating uh, batch of class 12, there's always an incoming batch of class five. So more or less, it remains the same. And because um, uh, some of the fields are compulsory, such as school, city, and grade, Curious Junior also has data that they can leverage in the future for anything. Metrics are stickiness, how often the groups are visited, and the usage of search and filter options by the users. Phase two is the internal leaderboard. Much like in the challenge um, um, menu bar where you have fame wall and champions, we will be recycling that to only the school group. So uh, the top 10 uh, users who uh, made the most progress in Curious Juniors will be there in the fame wall and the winners of the competition will be there in champions. But everyone who are displayed will only be from the within the school board themselves. This really helps users uh, uh, develop a sort of healthy competition when they see that, oh, he has uh, learned the most or she has learned the first, uh, most in Curious Junior. I know them. And also this helps in creating that uh, concept of a study buddy itself. Obviously, no Curious Junior goodies have to be given, but this is has a different social value altogether. The leaderboard details, what if there aren't uh, 10 users in the school group to begin with, for example, for Amar. So when he's uh, added onto the school group, both the features, that is fame wall and championships, require a certain set of uh, number of users to be added into the school group before they become enab enabled. This also incentivizes existing users to reach out and onboard other members from their school. So this, the impact uh, should be more participation in competitions, especially when they see their friends participating and winning and faster adoption of Curious Junior in the new market. Metrics should be more uh, registration and co uh, competition and user engagement, MAU or DAU. Phase three, uh, this is uh, requires a, sl a slightly more engineering. Um, this is an activity feed. So when you click on groups, instead of seeing all the members directly, there is an activity uh, option. This is kind of a primitive version of what Facebook used, the Facebook wall itself, where uh, users can share their progress in Curious Junior platform, such as apps, badges, certificates, registration, etc. So anything that is already shareable in the current app, right now you can share apps, right now you can share certification badges, can be shared on this activity feed and can be viewed by every member of the group, which is your school group. And also when you a person you follow shares an activity, you receive a notification on your phone. So 
a person you follow generally is going to be a friend so once they share an activity or their progress you are more you are more likely to come back to the app and see what they did and again continue your journey on curious junior like i said everything that is currently shareable on the app sh can be shared on to activity the one thing that is not currently shareable uh, in the existing platform of curious junior is registrations of competitions and i want to inc incorporate that into activity as well so when any user registers for a competition successfully they can Nikhil, share you have one minute just okay. letting you know okay thank you they can share that fact in the group now we are all all our users are going to be minors so this slide is just to uh, incorporate some more rules just so that the environment is safe and encouraging for all users the impact should be again user engagement stickiness and how many people click on the notification itself phase 4 is if the group works out uh, we want to incorporate mul multiple groups which is not just their school so school becomes default and nobody can remove that but what if they want to uh, have study buddies within their apartments or tuition centers so that is the only feature that will be added in phase 4 and for prioritization uh, follows is the one solution that i provided earlier which is being able to see who you are following and the reach of that will be quite immediate and is the engineering is also quite limited for phase 1 and 4 uh, the other solution phase 2 and 3 4 everything is depend on phase 1 groups itself so i haven't prioritized that that is a must and phase 4 having multiple groups uh, is done based on the success of 1 2 3 Nikhil. so i prioritized 2 and 3 i'm done yeah. Thank you. Okay, all right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for the great presentation, Nikhil. Thank great you. Great suggestions given. Over to the panelists for now. So, thank you, Nikhil. Uh, so, I wanted to ask that uh, first of all, I, I really like the approach of like community building, uh, taking the school as a reference, right, for creating the group. So, hmm. here I wanted to ask that let's say Curious Union is starting today as a company, right? And today, if we like create the group versus Let's say we have a uh, 10 million of download creating the group feature. Like how will you like like approach this following statement? Because when you create the group at the beginning, nobody will be there, right? So it will be like demotivating for the user because nobody is in the group. How will you solve this chicken problem? Yes. So uh, much like the user journey of Amar, who is your, uh, if you don't have presence, if Curious Junior does not have presence in Kendra Vidyala. Now, uh, there is a student called Amar who has learnt of Curious Junior from his cousin. His mom's told him that cousin did really well on this app. You should also join this app. So, uh, Amar has joined this app. Now, he's onboarded onto the school group, but nobody is there. Now, the responsibility, so there are many features available. That is fame wall, championships, I mean, champions. That incentivizes the Amar also to tell his friends to join the group. And when he sees that there is a school group without members, he wants to call his friends to join the group. So automatically, the school group will at least have his friends. And through word of mouth within the school, we hope to add more and more. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So uh, Nikhil, what will be the motivation? Yeah. Sorry, can I just add one more point to Amit's question? Yes. Yes. Uh, please, please. Yes. So. Uh, I would look at it as when they are added onto a school group with no other members. Uh, earlier, right now, there is if Amar had, didn't have anybody, there's no scope of forming a community. But if they're added onto a school group without any members, there is scope of forming the community, although the responsibility falls on Amar himself. Yes. So, uh, in his life, if Amar haven't introduced to the community ever in his life, then what will be the motivation for Amar to build a community uh, for his school? Okay, so if, if Amar is a shy boy, an introvert, he's not really okay with talking to people. Uh, not, not a uh, shy boy. Okay. He haven't experienced the community feature ever in his life. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So That's why, why will he uh, make community of That's his school? Yeah. Yes. So, um, Amar is, so in coding, he may not have experienced a community, but Amar will go in school, they play football, cricket. So he has, far, he has experienced community in different forms. He knows that uh, working together, playing together, studying together is more effective in the long term. So if he 
for su such users if uh, if they don't immediately find it or go out to invite friends maybe we can prompt them now and then if there's 10 days and his group is still empty then we can say oh oh your group is still empty why don't you call somebody it feels a bit lonely here something like that something interactive we make we can introduce a nudge after 10 days but give him that time too but he as a children children are very intuitive and they will know that they enjoy people better their friends better okay okay and uh, uh, you said that uh, you we can share um, like badges or certificates of all the users in the group uh, in that particular uh, group right hmm. so there will be so much redundant content in the same group hmm. so will user aspire to like consume that content on on the group right so um actually what i had thought of was uh, the activity you're right it, it will be very redundant the activity feed should have a history of only seven days uh one week maximum also to save save on cloud space because more than one week nobody wants to know what people are done uh, uh, because progress is also very continuous what they did one month back is not relevant the progress that they did in the per week is what is relevant so even though it's uh, redundant in a certain form that there are always apps being shared or there are always badges being shared it's not so redundant because there are certain people you don't know in the school group group who are sharing apps but there are certain friends who you know are sharing this thing so that is the difference so they will see that oh um, my friend ajay has shared this app okay even i want to see what that app is so when you click on the app in the activity what his app his activity itself it'll take you to the app then you can play it or you can make it etc okay okay does that answer your question smith yeah 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 okay. thank you so nikhil i really enjoyed your presentation and uh, uh, obviously like the clean slides uh, thank you so so uh, there are four things you mentioned one is the single group or school groups and then mm -hmm. leader board basically uh, filtered by their schools or, or other other uh, variables you can say then okay. you mentioned activity right as a feed uh, where people are basically auto the content is basically shared in form of activity they have done then you said the multiple groups right mm -hmm. complexity of creating each and every feature is very different uh, and and obviously obviously you want to see the early motivation and the early behavior of them as well and you being an engineer yourself i just wanted to understand that how will you prioritize and what will you and why all right uh, can i just show my prioritization slide i just sped through it because i was out of time yes uh so uh, which feature were you looking for a prioritization of or everything i just want to understand what will be your priority let's say uh, you want to build only one feature and mm -hmm. why because you can't do let's say enough uh, you can't build everything together you want to right. try out one thing what will yes. be there and why yes uh, i think uh, activity requires the most engineering and that can be done on a later stage it's a social value uh, the jump isn't as much of, it will add on social value but the jump isn't as much i think group uh, that is phase 1 uh adding of group itself this is the most important yeah, and if you can just see all the members within the group that's enough um this is the most important yes because definitely you as curious junior we are promising a community but it is always better to find a community that you are familiar with that is within your vicinity that also shares the same city school right um for example I I got this inspiration also from I was also inspired from Strava the workout app yeah. right they have this groups feature and when me and my friends were added to a group I was more incentivized to run every day when I was able to see that rather than seeing that oh this person has run 10 kilometers no and much like that uh, Kavya or Amar will be able to find a community that they can relate to they see family of people so this is definitely the most impactful in every form understood cool thank you oh right uh hello i really enjoyed the thought process with which you are uh, providing the solution uh, one thing i want to understand let's suppose uh, a school a school is a very large entity in itself yes. 
because you see there would be in a in a, in a standard school a thousand students would be there so uh, what will be the relevance of somebody in class 12 and somebody in class 4 to be in the same group right so uh, the relevance of uh, so a class 4 student uh, sorry a class 5 student a class 12 student while their classes itself uh, they might be uh, in, yeah they might be in class 5 or class 7 for example that the school is deciding that's because based on age but the class 7 student might have just been introduced to blockly that's when he might be starting his coding journey and the class 5 student might be starting co coding journey at that time so they can potentially form study buddies although that is mostly likely won't happen because children have that uh, they will stick to their own classes and they won't want to mingle with juniors seniors etc but the relevance is there because they are learning the same concept at the same time so yeah okay. that is the relevance. so uh, the, the, uh, just last question uh, yes. the part of big community is being two way i do something and get a feedback and i also enjoy the creativity of others or get take inspiration from the others i think class if we have disparity in classes i the second part is more evident i can enjoy the creativity of others but i might not be comfortable uh, let's say class 9th student to be to engage in being a study buddy of class 5 so yeah. is there any potential solution that you can imagine just a quick solution uh, so um a solution for a class a class 5 student not to engage with the class 9 student is it uh, like we believe that there would be a hindrance or there would be a a, a push back for such an interaction yes. is there any solution for that um no i don't have a solution for that uh, how to overcome the hurdle between uh, by Uh, pushing a student of class five to engage with a class nine student because I think how much ever the app tries, if a class five student is uncomfortable with engaging with a class nine student, he he or she will not be doing that at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, I think how it's so we are more uh, likely to succeed by pushing the class five student to find people within class five that he can engage Correct. with rather than pushing him to engage with the class nine student who is there. Correct, correct. And then it funda, correct. Then fundamentally changes the basis of uh, uh, creating a group. Uh, how would correct. that be? How? If I I am in class five, I have a certain skill set, and I want yeah. to uh, be in a group of that skill set. Yeah. Uh, so that would be fundamentally different way of creating a group rather than creating a school uh, yeah. based group. Uh, the uh, school based group introduces to a lot of people but you can always filter within the group based on your comfort level so if you want to find people in your class then you can filter search for those members if you want to uh, uh, find a member based on the learning level you are at you can filter based on that level and so that is that's why i incorporated those two features so that it eases your journey to find that community and uh, so much like how i said in the final phase uh, adding multiple groups uh, it is true that in a school group it can become large and overwhelming in certain especially tier 2 cities where schools can be big which is why i had added apartments uh, tuition centers or classes also they can say class 5 section a and say that these four members are there five members are there so it filters down the group but that's again in phase 4 uh, which is not necessary to incorporate in phase 1 because that would be a smaller problem than what uh, we are currently facing okay fine does that answer your question janisha partially i basically okay. have to get more understanding why to uh, create an entity of school rather than mm -hmm. creating uh, uh, break the school chain uh, mm -hmm. and create a virtual world where people can create interest based groups why not that so there has to be a more concrete reasoning for that okay Uh, the idea of uh, just to finish it off i won't be adding anything more but the idea of school is because uh, users of the uh, curious junior app for example my uh, small, younger nephews cousins etc their points of interaction are home school school home they talk to their parents cousins family and then they talk to schoolmates generally classmates uh, it and if they have interest based it is generally they go to karate class swimming class etc where they also find people 
So hence school is the broader group that would be the efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Okay, looks like we are done with all the questions. Thank you so yeah. much for the presentation, Nikhil. That was Thank a great you. presentation. Best of luck. Thank you. Over to you, Prancho. Uh, thanks, Tanya. Good luck, Nikhil. I'll just share my screen again. So we have two participants remaining. Uh -uh. Two teams. Just one second. You can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah it's visible. Okay, all right. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Shivam, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Please raise your hands. Yeah, we have Shivam here. Still waiting for Yash. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yeah, Shivam, you're audible and visible. Got it. Yash is also here. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible yeah, yeah. and visible. Okay, uh, so yes, you'll be presenting your speech. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, so shall we start? Yeah, yeah, please start. Okay. So, hey everyone, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to present our design solution. Through rigorous education and uh, a lot of great the sessions, we have come to the design uh, 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 solution. We basically are focused on developing a social value and creating certain incentives for the users to take up certain tasks, uh, take up certain challenges that they wouldn't have taken otherwise. Like, say, for example, so making their social, uh, what you can say, uh, um, what do you say, insecurities, breaking the ice, which they would not, not normally do. But if we can uh, award them for doing the same, we can incentivize for doing, uh, them for doing the same. We can have a lot more, much more thriving community and a better sense of uh, together men or sportsmanship. So that's what we focused on for design solution. Hope you guys like this. Uh, like it. Uh, over to you. Yash. Okay. So we're talking about the problem statement. Uh, is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah, but the uh, screen is not. I'm trying to do do that. It's not. Shivam, okay, you have to not. stop sharing and then yes, you can share. So, so I'm not sharing my screen. I'll, I'll start sharing again once second. Is the screen visible now? Yeah. Okay, talking about the problem statement that we had taken up, we took up the second problem statement where we had to develop some kind of social value for the users on the Curious Junior app so that the users keep coming on the app due to their social value. And we had to identify when and how we will introduce these social elements present on the app. Talking about the customer persona, we uh, talked with a student who used Curious Junior and other coding platforms. Nityam, he was 15 years old and was currently studying in class 10. His goals were basically like, uh, he wanted to learn coding and expand his skill set. And he had some kind of future goals where he wanted to be a, uh, have a job in the tech field. That's why he was learn. Uh, that's why he had started learning coding at an earlier age. And another one of the goals that he had was receiving appreciation from everyone. Since coding is a widely accepted skill right now, in the current society. So uh, like the peers and parents give, provide appreciation to the students who start learning coding at an earlier age. Uh, the frustrations that he faced were like lack of inter uh, interaction with other users and not enough social proof for his coding skills on the platform. And the motivations he had was the ease of navigation, social and the interactive features, gamification. And if you talk about his personality, he was collaborative, focused, uh, somewhat shy, but and he was seeking val uh, some kind of validation through his skills, uh, through his coding skills. The existing social features, the Curious Junior app store where you can publish as well as view, like and share this apps. Public profile where you can see information like level, total experience, apps and games created. 
all earned certificates you can also follow a user fame wall where everybody's to, uh, every day's co top coders are featured champions where the winners of the competitions are featured now talking about the required changes having uh, we thought that having a community feature where people can interact and collaborate with each other would help increase the social value of the app and adding a way to quantify social value and incentivize increasing the same users must be awarded for having high social value and skills on display so we somehow uh, through our solution made social value as a resource on this platform and having that resource would definitely some kind of uh, will definitely provide benefit to you and increasing social proof of the skills of a user and uh, a way to increase engagement by awarding active usage of app finishing courses and its new social features so the already provided features that were there were not being used that much uh, like students were not following each other that much at some places so we wanted to incentivize that too now over to shiva here so the main uh, aspect that we followed was gamification for our ux and our design solution so for that we have introduced a new rank system which focuses on quantifying and kind of awarding a user for being a good community member as a whole as well as a good uh, shivam you are not that clearly audible uh hello i'm audible if you could speak louder that would be helpful um hello hello am i audible now yeah okay okay so uh through this rank system we were mainly focusing on uh, awarding certain users to be good community members as well as good coders now what does that entail that entails multiple uh, parameters so uh, i will go through those parameters one by one basically we have introduced a rank system that will work on, work on the basis of certain rank points which we call we will call rp rank points shall be uh, granted to a user on basis of three metrics particular metrics social apps and performance now what are these metrics and how do you earn relevant points in each of these metrics so when it comes to social metric this metric will be based on the number of followers that you have interacting interactions with others that you have rating of a group that you have been created or a part of we also have a feature called group uh, clubs that uh, we will be coming across later on this uh, presentation the second metric is apps this metric will be based on the apps uploaded the number of user app gets and the number of likes that your app has got some we can even uh, uh, extend the, the this metric to even the ratings that you app might have but that that uh, can be done for the later versions for the mvp we have these many metrics performance this metric will be based on the number of badges you have the number of courses you have completed and also the number of competitions that you have won so these are three metrics but the main essence of this uh, introducing this rank system was the social feature now so, so th th this will give you a, a, a user a, a lot of incentive for uh, giving a priority to their social points the app uh, related to the social metrics as well and they will focus a lot on um, uh, developing a good profile a good social image among their peers etc etc uh, next one so how will the rank uh, rank system work by introducing the rank system we have provided incentives to the users for various existing features in the app and increase the overall social value and social recognition of the user so you can see uh, on the uh, on the right ui screen uh, ayush uh, has a, a rp of 2400 points Uh, that uh, that basically uh, signifies the number of rp points he is he or uh, uh, ayush has and based on that he is also given a rank title as you can see below ayush it's written coding coding night now kids are very uh, uh, they are uh, they like these kind of titles they like uh, they like games uh, uh, men games uh, usually uh, award uh, users with certain ranks certain uh, you can say badges etc etc a lot of things that can customize your profile customize your online presence shivam so, uh, you have one minute letting you know yeah yeah okay you have one minute remaining just let, letting you know acha okay okay on reaching the milestone uh, so i will just reach through this quickly on reaching these milestones being promoted new rank titles their followers are also notified notified of the user's achievement and help this helps bring uh, build a sense of community next slide after clicking on the rank point ct the profile section of of the app opens up which the users will land upon this page will show the users their progress and explain the basics of the rank system how they work on what uh, rank rank uh, the how many rank points are needed for a particular title to be uh, taken and granted the social aspect of the rank point helps increase the social value of the app essentially that's what the essence of rank points is 
the significance of rank points. A user's RPs are displayed on top of their profile pictures. Users are designated rank titles based on the RP. The six titles that we have uh, designated are Amateur, Coding Knight, Coding Wizard, Coding Major, Coding Master, and the uh, most RP points you, you can get, you will be re rewarded with the uh, rank title Coding Legend. The higher uh, higher uh, left helps you gain social proof of your skills, first of all. Second, it provides you the, with the eligibility to create your own groups, your own clubs and participate in certain elite or uh, elite champ uh, championships and competitions, which you wouldn't have been uh, otherwise able to if you have a lower rank points. They, they will have uh, they will have loads of uh, minimum rank uh, rank criteria etc etc throughout the year. Users are also awarded with special badges and elite badges for having certain amount of rank points. Uh, these are the certain streams that you get uh, once you have leveled up and you have ranked up uh, through uh, accumulating a lot of rank points. Next. Week. Yeah, on to yes. Uh, talking about the leaderboard, the rank point leaderboard promotes the users to increase their rank points and have a place in this uh, leaderboard. So along with the fame wall and champions, there will be another story kind of thing where you can click and see the people with the most of the rank points that <laughs> week. And that will be only limited to top 20 so that uh, it develops some kind of scarcity and only the top people could be seen over there. So the other users are motivated to be in that top places. Uh, talking about clubs, clubs will act as a community feature for the app. Clubs can be created by users that have reached a minimum rank of coding wizard. This will help uh, <coughs> help the kids to be is to be motivated to increase their rank to coding wizard so that they can create a club and ask their friends to join and interact with them on the app. Each club can participate in club uh, competitions and events, thus helping the users build a collaborative environment amongst themselves. Clubs will have club RPs that will be a sum of all the individual club members' RPs. The number of members will be limited to 10 in a club to create a scarcity of uh, good clubs with good members. This scarcity will increase, will motivate the user to get higher ranks and hence increase the chances of getting into a good club. The club uh, <coughs> will have some features. The club chat box will act as a place to interact and grow with your peers. It will also help the group members to collaborate with each other. The about page will have a description of the club. It will also showcase a list of the members and the badges earned by the club. Under the events tab, the club members can see events and competitions that they are uh, that they are eligible for. The club competitions will have a minimum entry rank points. This will increase the competition and the drive to gain more rank points by the clubs. Since the users are of a young age, they tend to compare themselves with others, uh, with others and improve with time. The members list is a list of all the members of the group where the top five members are provided designations this acts as a motivator for the rest of the users to increase their rank points and hence be provided with a designation the showcasing of badges and rank points in the list helps maintain the competitive spirit amongst the club members and prompt the users to improve uh some new quality, quality of life, life changes. changes yeah uh, talking about some new quality of life changes that we have introduced Notifications are a, uh, a big part of the of community and letting uh, a user know what their peers are up to and how they are progressing with their endeavors. So notifications act as a daily piece of encouragement, a friendly nudge to back, a, a back amongst their coding learning. The various types of uh, notifications serve different purposes for building a community mindset to act as, uh, to act as encouragement for, the, for a particular user. We also have uh, badges, uh, we, uh, the uh, users can have three featured badges uh, which will be uh, uh, visible on top of their uh, profile picture, which will also uh, create a sense of competition with uh, their peers, like who can get these particular badges and who can perform much better than, uh, than their peers. Notification, uh, in notification, we can have various types of notification. We can have a uh, certain promotion promote notifications, like say for example, your peer just got promoted to a new rank. Your uh, peer just uh, accepted you for a particular group he invited you for a particular club, etc., etc. Loads of things. Okay, so we have incentivized these kind of things through uh, notification and brought a sense of community together. Uh, yes. uh, talking about the prior, uh, prioritization, we have the, the use the right score system, and uh, the priority list will be like the rank system will be rolled out first, then the clubs, and the notifications after that, and the last one would be the leaderboard. Uh, thank you, everyone. This was our presentation. Thank you, Yash. Thank you, Shivam, for the amazing presentation. Over to the panelists for the questions. Would any of you like to start? 
Yeah, I'll go. I'll go first. So, uh, community has been. Uh, I really like your presentation. First of all, congratulations. And uh, secondly, uh, if we imagine clubs, let's say, or a community. Hmm. So, what is the weightage of learning? How it is coming up, or do you don't believe that learning should be the primary ingredient for such community to engage, or it, or it should be separate? How? What is your thought process on that? Um, the basic like, thought process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shyam, you want to go first? No, it's fine. Okay. The basic thought process of ours was like the students can collaborate in these places like clubs where they can collaborate with each other and form clubs and participate in competitions and uh, test each other's uh, each other against different clubs and hence they will learn how to collaborate and learn from each other. They will also have a chat box where they can uh, discuss their doubts and like if they are prob uh, having problems in some kind of course, so that would uh, be another way of learning from each other. Uh, Shyam, you, would you like to add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, Janishev, uh, as far as uh, creating a collaborative environment is uh, concerned, we also have in uh, incorporated a new uh, kind of competitions. So earlier, you can only to, uh, take part in competitions as an individual, right? But as, as we have introduced a, a new feature called clubs, you can take part in uh, club competition as well. That calls for a lot of collaboration and uh, calls for a, a, a really good, uh, a, a really good sense of community as well. That uh, that can develop a lot of uh, things moving forward. If you're uh, talking about collaboration, if that's the main uh, essence that you're going for. Okay. Okay. So last question from my end. Uh, how do we imagine a club? What will be the basis of creating a club? Who will be the members? What will be the uh, way of creating those clubs? Uh, the way of creating those clubs will be uh, the user need to reach a certain level of rank points before they can create a club uh, like coding wizard just for example we took coding wizard and after that a user can create a club and then maybe he can invite other people uh, that he knows or uh, follows to join the club and again that's the way the club can be formed and the club works over it. Cool. I think uh, uh, just one thing. I wanted to understand who is the designer in both of you. Oh, we both are we designers. Both design. well, what interests you more, uh, designing or or actually understanding? Like, what is like exactly you want to do? The designing part or or actually go into the feature building where where you understand users. We both have explored the designing part. And now we are currently exploring the feature part, like how we can just build features and the whole process over that goes in building a feature. We want to learn that. That's why we participated in this competition. So we have a history of our doing work. So I, I really, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. I think there's some. I really enjoyed the designing part. I think can Shivam has some network issue. Shivam? Yeah. Yeah, there's some really on my part. Please go ahead. Yeah, so really enjoyed the designing piece, how you have represented uh, things on the product and how we have, you have uh, I would I would say uh, like need to, but I would uh, go deeper into the user behavior. Example, if I would, uh, I would never want to introduce a chat feature for uh, uh, students of K-12. Right. Reason being, uh, I don't know whether it is a safe thing to do it for K-12 students or not. So, so more, more, I think I would say uh, to understand this product especially, it will be very helpful to know more about users. How are they thinking? Uh, and, and, and then imagine uh, features for them as per their behavior. But yeah, really like uh, the how you have designed the whole uh, presentation, presented it uh, uh, in the in the deck. Uh, thank you. And I would just like to add one point. Uh, the problem over here was to add social value. And to do that, we went ahead with gamification because the kids of this gen uh, generation are basically used to games. They know how games work. They know how these rank systems work. And they know how the flow works, how groups work in these games. That's why we made the basis uh, of gamification for our solution. That was understood. 
understood obviously like great approach because we also totally believe that users uh, of this age group really understand games well and the le leaderboard for them right uh, gaining uh, some skills to be uh, come at the top of the leaderboard those are really good for these features pretty uh, helpful also, to understand your uh, purpose like Thank just you. to uh, clarify on that uh, i 100% agree with your safety concern regarding the chat box I think that's why we uh, restricted ourselves to uh, the for the users to chat among the club itself and not having a global messaging feature like anyone can follow anyone and just chat and start chatting with them. I think that's a safety uh, concern and that's for sure we should have definitely a uh, bit more uh, careful with that. But that's what we were going for. Uh, that's why we restricted uh, the chat chatting to the club itself. But really, I 100% agree with you. Just wanted to say. Understood. 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 I, I guess yeah. that that's that's it from my. Uh, yeah. So uh, yes, and even just one question, like uh, your RP feature is uh, dependent on so many things, right? So how will you easily convey uh, this feature to the users so that okay. uh, they, can, they can easily understand that what RP is and what are the things that RP depends on, and mm -hmm. what will be the in inspiration for them to like. Uh, be in the top of the RP list. Okay, uh, the major motivation to be on the top of the RP list is the benefits that they will get from it. Uh, first would be the leaderboards, then would be the clubs. Like to join clubs, uh, you'll have to be having some kind of good RP or at a good level. Then only you can join some good clubs and participate in competitions uh, that are, have a good level. And that would act as a motivator. and. The benefits that have been added around with this RP uh, is what would motivate the kids to uh, gain more points. And uh, talking about uh, the kind of metrics that we have added to it, yeah, uh, I would definitely agree that we have added a bit more metrics and we need to cut down on some. But uh, to uh, talking about it, uh, children today have been playing a lot of games. If you see the complexity level of the modern games, the number of features they provide and the number of uh, things, the RP points or the basic things depend upon. It's, it's uh, I don't know, I don't have a word for that. They Like they have a lot of features and I definitely believe the kids would be able to learn it in a certain amount of time. So, uh, uh, what according to you, like, uh, who are the targeted users for this RP feature? Uh, are they the uh, new users or they are the power, power users? Uh, I would say the uh, main uh, people that we targeted with this would be the uh, new. I think we didn't uh, think about this like in a way, can new users or the power users. We just uh, took them as kids that. Uh, love to play games and that's why we introduced it in a way of RP. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, like just wanted to know, like uh, if someone is here to learn coding on our app, then mm. why he or she should be uh, motivated to build social value on app to increase the RP? Yeah. Uh, j just the same way. Everybody is uh, motivated to post on Instagram and get a good Instagram feed. They are motivated in that way because everybody is doing it. Yeah, I think initially it would take some effort to build that kind of behavior in the general society of general kids that are using. But once they start seeing, okay, this public profile has badges, this uh, guy has, is in this group. And once that starts, it would definitely gain momentum over time. Okay, okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Would you like to ask something, Amit? Yeah, last question. Uh, so we already have the XP feature, right? XP points, right? Yeah. And mm. we are introducing the RP. So how yeah. will we like, it will be very confusing for the user to understand. And we already have faith. So what will be the solution from your side? Okay. Uh, talking about XP and RP, uh, if you see any, like just taking the example of Duolingo, they have gems and they have points. So the coins are easily available and the XP is really easily available in Curious Junior. 
the rp over here is depending on so many metrics that it, it is not that easily available to the user and they really have to work hard for it and th that's what mot uh, will motivate them uh, that's what will uh, help the other features to develop over time like they'll participate in courses they'll participate in competitions that will help them gain rp because it's harder to gain if we talk about xp we just complete one course and we get some rp we just complete one course we get some uh, xp sorry so that's easier to gain this is much harder to gain and this will just this is an engagement process this will engage them in the whole app uh, they will use the other features that have been over there and that will uh, gain the engagement yeah okay thank you awesome thank you for answering all the questions yashan shiva best of luck to you guys uh Thank moving you. on to the last team so we don't need the picker wheel for that we have swastika and rudram who will be sharing their decks and will be the last presentation for the day so if you guys could just raise your hands We have Rudram here waiting for Swastika. Oh, hi, everyone. Hi, yeah, you're audible and visible, Swastika. Rudram, can you please switch on your camera? Uh, yeah, just a second. Uh, so we would really love a heads up at five. Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah, now Rudram is also visible, so you guys can start whenever you're ready. This is a pack five, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just needed a heads up at five. So let me know when you want to start. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, is my screen Hi. visible, first of all? Yeah, your screen Hi. is visible. Uh, good evening, everyone. So over the past couple of weeks that we've been spending exploring the app, the only thought circling in our heads has been this is the edtech we need and we're so excited to present to such a panel and uh, just wanted to point out that Janisha mentioned uh, certain views for the app in the beginning and uh, we're really all the more excited for it because of how, how our solutions align with it specifically. So um, let's dive into the problem statement without any further ado. So uh, aiming to formally define the scope of our solutions, uh, we have chosen to go ahead with problem statement number two and redefined it as focusing on facilitating the social value synergies present on the Curious Junior app. Moreover, we are trying to answer two primary questions to our analysis and solutions. The first one is, is there and what is the uh, relationship between committed customers and the social features on the app? And two, how we can leverage those social uh, features on the app to further our engagement. Uh, for this, we also did a quick market research to lay ground for our solutions. Now, as we all might agree, the Indian education system is driven majorly by the ever-rising academic competition and the demand for quality education in the moderate income section that we defined as, defined as aspirers who deem education as a tool for social mobility. For them, teaching quality, accessibility, affordability, and employability also are the major pain points. And Curious Junior, with its innovative mobile-based coding environment, targets it efficiently and really works at removing those. And this is also what forms the ethos of the solutions that we propose. Over to so, you. Uh, yep. uh, after having a business hypothesis defined to base our ideas upon, uh, we started doing some user research. So herein, we are trying to leverage the predefined segments, as Janisha also explained during the start of the session. Uh, and that in combination with the levels of engagement on the app. So the levels of engagement here are defined using a simple Pareto principle that 80% of the clicks are coming from 20% of the users. And that's how I bucketed all the users into three buckets. So one would be actively engaged, moderately engaged, and not so engaged. And then the idea behind this chart on the left is to segment the users based on the time they take to complete a lesson uh, versus the time of a lesson comp versus a lesson completion. So for instance, if you look at the area under this blue curve for the segment C users, this is uh, roughly 5% of the entire users, which we are saying that they are familiar with coding and uh, uh, 
uh, and they have been able to achieve a 100% uh, completion rate in a very small, short span of time and hence they are classified as relatively experienced coders similarly most of the uh, most segments b and a also took relatively higher time moreover another interesting thing to look at this chart is the slope of this curve so if you look so we have defined the slope as lesson com learning completion rate so for segment c who are supposedly more experienced user have a much higher lesson completion rate learning completion rate as compared to segment b users and segment a users so and further combining this segments and the engagement segment we have defined nine user buckets so those would be segment a a a b a c and so on so after this exercise we end up with nine segments and our uh, problem statement has further redefined into one to graduate the users from segment a to segment c and from these not so engaged users to actively engaged so essentially what we are trying to say is that these yellow boxes should shift towards the green boxes so without any further ado let's dive into the solutions so one which most of the other teams have also came to conclusion is the community discussions and this would be this would essentially be a tab uh, for each of the competition that would direct to another forum like page with the option to create a, a, with the option to create like or comment on post pertaining to that competition the power of communities when it comes to the coding is immense the discussion tab would be an insightful channel for peer learning among the curious juniors so it will also help us reduce the churn rate in competitions by offering them an another layer of community based assistance as the user codes besides that besides the tab user will also be incentivized with the xps and badges for posting and uh, engaging with the posts that uh, earn in terms of likes and comments so their their posts will also show up in their profile thus providing the users uh, with a better idea of who they need to follow or who they want to follow uh, further if look at you can have a look at the wireframe so there would be three entry points for this feature so one would be the com competition detail page where there can be a panel here for entering this page then other could be the coding uh, id where there would be a small button to chat here and the and the second and the last one would be uh, last one would be in the side panel which the ui is not present here but basically we have an idea to introduce another button so uh, five minute heads up oh, as sure. you requested okay okay uh, so collaborate to compete as the name suggests this feature uh, shall allow the users to collaborate with other users wherein they can invite ex either existing users directly or their friends through a referral link to the challenge and solve a problem together the primary intent behind doing this is one to increase engagement across competitions with active users working live more active users working live and two is to increase referrals targeting user acquisition so other features would include access for uh, other sub features here would include access for the team leader to assign a predefined independent sub tasks to other member additionally after obtaining the consent of members we may also plan to uh, enable a voice chat enable features uh, so here we have striked it off because there is a high risk associated with this feature and uh, uh, the impact from a user uh, the impact from a more user empathy point of view is to offer them the benefits of a collaborative learning environment and prepare them for a real life social employment situation and here is a small example here so owing to the lack of time i'm going to skip this and uh, we'll see if there is enough time left so our next solution is leaderboard options so uh, what we are proposing here as a part of the solution is essentially a revamped leaderboard the objective is to render a more granular understanding of where a user stands as compared to the peers and leveraging uh, that as a motivation to perform better so over to swastika for the next slide yeah i i would just like to add a few more uh, points to the leaderboard feature we are also using notification and nudges here for the leaderboard uh, this is essentially to kind of motivate others to you know engage with the app more for example when i say granular what i mean is maybe people from your school and maybe people from the same class as yours or maybe people from um, you know the same locality as you so here are a few examples that you can quickly take a look at and uh, we'll move to the next slide now okay now challenge your users so basically this is we are repurposing an existing share feature that we have for each competition right so essentially what we are doing is that the messaging is changed to challenging someone rather than just sharing it 
so users would like that peers to undertake an interesting challenge like you know if there's something really interesting that i came across as like oh i probably want to come to see how he's going to do at it and you know so basically i can just share a link uh, via whatsapp and other channels but internally within the app also you can invite another user to uh, you know to join that competition and to work on it now this would show in another pending challenges tab the side panel on the home page so that way you're actually keeping track of the challenges that you need to do so it's sort of like a to do list right uh, next slide now the fourth one is host to competition and i'm very optimistic about this particular feature because it is this feature that kind of leverages the powerful and game changing id that you folks have developed at Curious Junior, which is mobile based, right? Considering the affordability aspects and accessibility aspects, this is best. And um, host a competition is a feature that we think can be used by segment C teachers. We, it can be used by educational practitioners, teachers, to kind of foster a coding culture among, um, you know, the kids that they're associated with. So this would essentially um, be a host a competition widget. This is a radical feature, I would say, uh, on the challenge page. So user will define the problem statement along with the test cases that the code will be evaluated against, right? So users will also have the ability to set the access scope of the competition, whether it's public, uh, whether only their followers can join that competition, and or whether it's private. That is, you know, you can only add specific users to join it. Hosting a competition will earn the user some XP points, and you also need to be at a certain level to be able to host competition, which we've defined as segment C, right? So again, we are leveraging the previously defined pending challenges tab here, where uh, wherein if somebody invited you to a competition that you've hosted, it would show up in that pending tab, uh, challenges tab. The users will also need to be verified before posting any competition because that adds like um, an additional level of security to what we are doing. Um, uh, due to the paucity of time, we'll just move ahead. So right. coming after having the five solutions listed, uh, we are using the RISE framework to prioritize the aforementioned ideas. And here are the results. So as seen on the left, challenge someone seems to be the best solution. However, if you look at the chart on the right, uh, you would see that from a business point of view, uh, if you look at the chart on the right, you would see that from a business point of view, uh, host a competition is of a much higher importance to Curious Julia. And uh, that is why we are actually proposing to go ahead with both the solutions, but released in successive phases. So uh, before we start discussing the roadmap on how we plan to propose that uh, implementation, uh, let us have a quick look at the metrics which we shall be tra tracking. So there are two North Star metrics for us. One is COM DAU and the other is DAUs on competitions. The latter is fairly self-explanatory, but to define the former, let us look at the funnel on the left. So COM DAUs are uh, essentially committed DAUs on the app, which are equivalent to the actively engaged users. So these here in additional type uh, defined, additional type is defined as proponent users. Proponent, this has not been defined before. So uh, the idea here is that these are individuals uh, who are so active on the app that they can be a potential target for having a if we if ever curious junior aims to release a, a paid layer of uh, like a paid tier of their um, education they can target this type of audience and then another key priority um, kpi here is the retention rate so to under understand this uh, understand how this works to let us have a quick look at this retention flow here so if someone comes on curious junior well they are onboarded activated and when they are using the app eventually they might lapse and might be churned and they are uh, essentially disengaged but what we are saying is that by hosting a competition or by challenging some other user, we are basically reactivating them and then bringing them back again on the platform. So this is this is what we are uh, calling as retention rate or users reactivated. Uh, and here are other few listed KPIs which we also intend to track. So over to Swastika for the roadmap. Uh, like I mentioned, we will be going ahead in phases. The first week would be spent in brainstorming the ideas, how to go about it, what all. Uh, features would be required. The second week is the challenge someone release. As you already know that uh, as part of the challenge someone, we have um, a feature kind of, we are laying grounds for our next feature, which is host a competition with the pending challenges tab, right? 
the second week uh, two weeks that is the third fourth week would be spent in the beta launch we are introducing challenge time one to the segmency users because these are the most active one they have derived the highest value out of curious junior and we are rolling out various variations of the app ui to different subgroups and analyzing the performance uh, the next two weeks are the pilot and preparation for phase 2 which is goes to competition so we gauge the responses tracking the kpis and direct surveys and update and improve the gui you know which ever one suits us best um then we spend a week and a half on the beta launch of post to competition now we roll this out to an aeb test post to competition to segment c and bb and dc users um more on that will be explained by radram and then after that three weeks uh, which is a pivotal time where we'll see how everything is going ahead and how all these features work in tandem what are the results the kpis whether it's working or not we draw the conclusions from these observation and use these to plan changes and improve the app further and then just scale it up like we always do so thank you so much this was us and we are open to questions now thank you thank you so much rudram and swastika yeah over to the panelists okay yeah i really like the presentation good work guys uh, first a feedback and second a question uh, feedback would be uh, the presentation that you submitted had too much information in the text form so earlier it was about to be rejected but as i read to the end i understood a lot of uh, uh, substantial concepts were there so first thing uh, on feedback how you can reduce it to be more uh, absorbable information right on the presentation side itself uh, second second would be the question uh, i want to ask host a competition as i understood there another stakeholder coming into the picture that is an educator or a teacher so for curious junior in application uh, having two stakeholders and a, a journey not customized it was would it be smart or would it be feasible even how do you see that so uh, um, that was the idea behind having the users verified before uh, hosting a competition so the idea so the only users who would verify themselves would be someone who is like an instructor or a tutor so instead of having an entirely revamped user flow or user journey for a different different user type uh, which may actually hinder the primary flow of what user uh, curious junior is so we just wanted to like cut that uh, user journey and uh, bring a much uh, shorter path as a verification okay okay so i understood there would be a different uh, entry path for different stakeholders precisely okay so the sixth what point is, that, is basically from, that is from the nine okay fine fine got it thank yes same feedback uh, from my side also uh, what ali said about the ppt uh, and overall uh, like we got and we understood what is there in uh, as a matter right uh, so i wanted to ask let's uh, uh, say you are launching a feature like post a competition with like teacher and all so how do you decide that um, on what metric you decide that this feature is working or not like when to take the call uh, like remove the, this feature or whether to proceed or improvement required in this feature or not okay so the most important metric for checking the drop offs or uh, you know how the feature is failing and rather instead of successing the succeeding is the drop off rates and if you are not if you are observing high drop off rates that means that probably we have done something wrong or we have to uh, relook at the feature so that was the idea of keeping drop off rates and ctr uh, on the priority metrics here so i think that should answer your question if there is anything else to let me yeah let's say there are two types of apps uh, let's say one is like instagram and one is like educational app so in okay. that uh, in both the apps uh, the drop off rates will be like different right Hmm. there has to be a benchmark different for the educational app and for the like social media app right so you are talking about having a baseline decided before actually releasing yeah. or pushing yeah. out with that so uh, yeah so yeah. for host a competition that was the idea with the beta launch so that's what uh, since there was a little bit of a lack of time we did not explain this part so host a competition could actually be an aab test so a1 users could get the visibility of the user segments which we decided in the slide 3 the nine buckets which we made so we will obviously make it in a more colloquial formal uh, format and the host can collect that which features they want to so this would be one uh, segment 
the other segment will not have this visibility but will but will still see the host uh, competition button and the b would be no such feature so by this ab test i'm trying to actually decide whether we should proceed with this feature or not that's the basic idea of how we would go about in the roadmap okay. thank you okay uh, so rudram just wanted to uh, so firstly like working to both of you i uh, like the committed dao and then basically identifying the drop off and then measuring basically predicting the dao um, the way of calculating would be good but i want to understand if let's say somebody would be hosting uh, a competition that would be a power user who would be doing it like you mentioned the users will be verified right mm -hmm. then then the onus of uh, bringing users will actually come to the users those who are hosting it right so whether it will be a, a chunk considering the fact that these students are K12 and there's 80 percent of them do not understand coding, right? Absolutely. As of now, would it would be great to make competition as a feature as a front face for them to engage, or or should or there can be other features as well where uh, competition is targeted only for the power users. Absolutely, I think I just understand to, your just question. Just want to know your thoughts. Uh, can I can I take that? I think I totally understand where you're coming from. Oh, okay, sure. sure so I'll see yeah. So uh, basically, we would like I would first like to explain what are our thoughts behind introducing host to competition. So um, essentially, when we said educators and when we are saying there are power users, right? So they're basically what we are going ahead with is that if there is somebody who's a good problem solver, they're also great problem identifiers, right? So um, that is mostly that is why we are verifying whether uh, you know that is why we are using segment c users as a benchmark to be able to kind of host competitions right uh, so only segment c users basically if they have a certain xp or certain badges only then they will be able to uh, leverage this feature another aspect of it which uh, i would like to propose uh, when uh, you raise the concern for educators and other stake uh, the such stakeholders is that uh, I would personally, it will be really exciting for us to introduce host um, Curious Junior as an app to schools, you know, somewhat along the lines of what Khan Academy has done in the past, where they have directly collaborated uh, with schools to uh, further their, um, you know, their call. So that is what I had in mind, what we had in mind when we were talking about host a competition for Curious Junior as well. There could be additionally, um, we would say a web page sort of an interface for a teacher or an educator who want to host a competition on the app. And this would hold great value for people, especially in tier three, tier four cities who do not have access to laptops, but they should be exposed to coding. Uh, like Janishar mentioned earlier, it is a skill and it is also a medium. And when we say medium, it's it's something which everybody needs access to because being a software developer myself, I know that it does. It's not just about programming and writing code and implementing. It is also about, uh, you know, it is also about bringing that, uh, building that problem solving ability. And uh, for building that problem solving ability, especially in tier four, tier three cities who, who do not have access to laptops, this is game changing. Question arises: Who would introduce them to? And that I think that is where teachers and educators come in. Yeah. And that so just yeah, just a quick comment on that, uh, or a counter question would be that uh, right now, Curious Junior is hosting competitions. Okay, and mm -hmm. if we leverage teachers and educators from institute just like Khan Academy and create competitions, it would eventually be same like Curious Junior hosting competitions. It would not be an engagement within the community of the students first thing second would be if students are first we have to understand our users what is the capability of the users or what they can create as an outcome from the application if they are well enough to create competitions that other can do is it the right path to take given the skill requirement for the users so here i think there should there is a need for a more thorough understanding of the users and the problem statement that we're trying to solve. Just a uh, uh, quick uh, feedback on that. 
Understood. So, so basically, I, I also basically want to continue to what you said, Swastika. I understood that completely, right? But, uh, but taking forward my question, right? Uh, there is a very big assumption of the people, those who are, especially with respect to kids, right? The people, those who are a very good problem solver or also a very good problem finders, right? So uh, these, uh, especially K-12 students, behave very differently. Uh, I believe this uh, feature or host a competition when you would have thought of might have had uh, similar assumptions of college students or, or, or somebody who know about coding and who want to compete more often. Uh, I would say uh, there is a need of understanding these kids motivation first. Why do they want to participate in the competition and whether they want to organize a competition or not? Uh, okay, uh, so that was my uh, response to the question, uh, basically discussion. Uh, yeah, and I, I think I would uh, say the same thing. Uh, whether we have we uh, spoken to the users, those who have confirmed that they want to organize competitions, I, my my question would be that uh, because whenever we propose anything, it would it is better to get a feedback from especially from users because they are the true judge. Uh, instead of any any panelist. So actually, we do align with your thought process and the understanding of user uh, user base, and that is why we did not say that uh, oh, let's ho let's launch host a competition right away. That's why we said that okay, let's have a phase one with challenge someone, and we try to extend host a competition to certain users of segment C, B, D, and B, C, and try to see how ac actually that how ac exactly the users behave to that. If that is relevant and actually helpful to the uh, user base, then okay, we should go ahead with it. Otherwise, uh, like someone else also asked, how would we measure the uh, how if the feature is failing or not? So yeah, understood. So just to add, I really I really like the idea of challenging the user. That that way, I thought yes, we are thinking of how a user can be um, it interactive among themselves and as well as well as come together as a learning process. That's the idea I really like. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it from my end. Uh, guys, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things you have put in this uh, presentation. I think we have enjoyed reading this uh, completely and liked it. All the very best. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Swastika and Rudram, for the presentation. Uh, Yup, so now we have the decision time, but we'll give five minutes to our panelists for the same. So um, yeah. till then, yeah, you guys can discuss if you in, want. Yeah, yeah, we will be back in five minutes. Awesome. Sounds great, sounds great. Till then, I had um, a few queries coming in for the next uh, edition of Teardown. So addressing those, we have, uh, I have posted the form link in the chat box. But we we have not yet revealed the company that we'll be partnering with. So that is something that all of you guys would figure out um, in the first week of April. You'll, you'll get emails for that with the problem statement. So do not worry about that. And I also have a few polls lined up for you guys. So if you would just answer those and help us get some insights. So first of all, yeah. So have you guys registered for the April edition of Product Year Down? If not, the link is in the chat. The message is pinned. If you cannot access it, let me know. Awesome, getting a few responses, waiting to hear from everyone else as well.
got it and in case any of you are looking for further updates about tier downs um the first source is obviously our slack channel so in case you have not yet joined it please join it you will find the link to the slack channel as soon as you register for the tier down so that is one thing and second source is our whatsapp groups so either way it's better to be a part of all of them uh, one out of the two at least the whatsapp groups and the slack so that you can get regular updates cool i'll be closing this poll and then i'll be asking the million dollar question of today so since all of you have been with us from the very starting so let us know who according to you will be winning this tier down today wait your uh, vote for your favorite team and let us know still waiting for others to cast their votes Awesome. So, um, in case any of you are looking to um, check out the previous tier downs, uh, including the problem statements and the solution decks, as well as the deck day presentations, uh, you can find all of that on our website. So, you can check that out as well. There, you will find all the tier downs we have had till now, all the winning tier down decks that we have, as well as the YouTube videos where you will find a lot of insights from the product managers at those companies, their founders, and all of them sharing their experiences with the tier downs. Guys, also uh, you can check out our 
website hit the product folks we have learning paths uh, for product management and you will have uh, many we'll have a lot of youtube videos um, and also different courses that you can access so do do check out all of that and you have a lot of initiatives running uh, this week we have three or four things that uh, just ended so if you follow our socials or let's say turn on notification you'll be able to see what is going to start and uh, uh, you'll be able to register in time for that let me just also give you the link for the website Okay, so this is linked to the website. So we have Mridul here and rest of the team as well. So yes, we have the results now. Over to uh, you guys. Yeah, sorry guys, sorry to make you wait. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so uh, first of all guys, uh, uh, you have done a great work. All the, all the presentations were amazing and then uh, not only the top finalists, all the people, those who have submitted the pre presentation and then basically went through the problem statement and tried to understand the user and more what Curious Junior is trying to solve. You have done a great job. Uh, but yeah, uh, for the sake of we had to choose finalists, we had to choose some of them. Uh, and then for that matter, Tanya is forcing us to choose a top three. Uh, so we have to choose top three as well. Uh, hence, uh, we are coming up with the names, but you have done a great work, every one of you. Uh, so second runner-up is uh, Avinav. Uh, so Avinav, like who is from, who is uh, who is a college student yet, he has done a great work, and there are a couple of uh, things we have really liked, like how he has introduced mascot in the first place, right, and how he is imagining everything and how he simplified the whole process. First runner-up is Nikhil Tilak. Nikhil has well thought the community, spoken to users, and simplify the whole process uh, of, of creating a community. So uh, good work, guys. Uh, so everyone would be waiting for the first uh, the winner, right? So winners are Prachala and Rishit. They guys, you have done a great work and the very good understanding of users very good understanding how do they think and then we we really enjoyed uh, listening to you guys and then how you have uh, created a solution out of it yeah Thank so, so congr much. congratulations Hi. everybody just yeah just uh, tanya want to add one a few, few sentences yeah. uh, so congratulations everybody really enjoyed the best part was uh, we got insight into our product more deeper while going through your solutions so it was uh, good for us as an exercise also. And everybody uh, presented with something different. And we really enjoyed your thought process. Uh, so thank you so much for participating. Uh, and congratulations to the winners. And there are no losers. So yes. basically, everybody is a winner right now. So very well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. And guys, like uh, the only, uh, I think, just wanted to tell you the mechanism, how have we decided uh the only thing we wanted to basically know who could connect with the users because there can be multiple solutions for that we need to understand the users for any product aspirant or any product uh, member or product folks right so we focus on the fact that how well you could understand the users then we can figure out the solution for their problem state Awesome. Would uh, Amit and Sumit also like to give some closing remarks before we end the session for today? Yeah, so it was really great. Like, uh, I really like what you guys are doing. Like, uh, we came to know uh, uh, so many things about our product also. And we get to learn so many things, uh, what they have presented. And at the same time, I would encourage everyone to participate again. And I would also like to, like, at least sit here uh, in, uh, when you are organizing the next one. So I'll definitely join. So best of luck and congratulations to all the winners and all the runners and, and everyone actually. Awesome. I'll send the first invite to Amit itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And and also also guys, uh, whoever is uh, want to give some feedback to us or want to speak to any one of us, feel free to reach out. 
we are open for that right and then uh, we are happy to hear all the feedbacks uh, with respect to our product also in case anyone wants to join you guys how would that be possible can if you can let the people know uh you can write to us uh, our, our email ids are very simple our first name at the rate qsjr.com awesome awesome yeah over to you samit anything you would like to add yeah just uh, uh, enjoyed the session like uh, got to know about so many pain points that our users are experiencing right now so we'll try to solve these also uh, so much in, uh, in, uh, insights from this session also so really enjoyed it and all the best for every participants yeah thanks awesome awesome thank you for joining us today guys it was really great a very useful usage of our time i would say Le learned a lot of things absolutely insightful i would say and best of luck to you hopefully some of these people would end up joining you as product managers in uh, the near future so best of luck to the participants and winners as well and hope Definitely. to see you guys in the next edition for sure april edition i will be launching it soon thank you thank everyone you, thank you for joining thank yeah thank you it was very intense thank you everyone thank bye, -bye. bye bye thank bye, guys. you bye bye have a, have a good evening <laughs>